So in this video, I'm going to go through simultaneous equations. So this is where you have uh, have got two unknowns in terms of two letters, and you need to work out the corresponding values that makes the equations true. Now, in the past at GCSE, you would have probably covered this uh, particular topic. However, with when moving on to AS, you might find yourself with more complicated equations. Now, what I will do is, although I will go through a, a method of two uh, solving two linear as simultaneous equations, so that's when you've got a single x and a single y as what's shown on the board there. I'm going to focus on the more types of questions that you're more likely to face at, at this level, which is where you've got one linear equation and one non-linear equation, usually in the form of a quadratic equation. But I will show you and talk you through the different steps. Now, one thing that uh, we'll focus on later when we go through examples is the fact that recognising that there are two methods of solving simultaneous equations. One of them is what we call the elimination method, which if the method that's shown on the board there with 2x minus 3 equals 3 and x plus 2, 3y equals 6, that is what we call the elimination method, where you try to get one variable the same in each equation, and then you simply um, eliminate them by taking or adding um, the two equations away. However, the method that's probably used at this level more is the substitution method. And that's where you have a common variable that's in both equations, and then you would substitute one for the other. And again, if that makes absolutely no sense to you at all, do not worry. When we go through this video, I will hopefully make sense of it. Now, before we go through some examples, let's just go through some of the basics of this particular topic. So what is it and what's this topic all about? So. With simultaneous equations, this is when you are finding the values of two variables uh, compared to one. So with basic algebra and solving equations, it's where you've got one unknown. So in the example that's shown there, we've got three, three x plus two equals nine. So you need to try and find that missing value or that value of x. And the same thing applies with the quadratic equation where you've got a single variable or so a single letter. And we need to find the values in this case of x squared plus x plus three equals zero. Now, where this topic also comes in is when you're asked to find the intersection point. Now, I can't stress that that word enough when it comes to this particular topic is whenever you see the word intersection or intersect, then it's always going to apply to this particular topic of simultaneous equations. So if you're asked to find the intersection point of a line with another line or a line with a curve or even two curves, then it's going to involve simultaneous equations. So, in terms of going on from that, uh, oh, just gone ahead too much. Right. So, a key thing to note in this particular example is so to find the value of one variable, you need one equation. To find the to find two variables, you need two equations. And in some extreme cases, which are quite rare at this level, but again, is not impossible, you might get asked to find three variables. So that's where you've got three different letters in which then you'll need three separate um, equations to work them out. Now, in terms of prior knowledge for this particular topic, you need to be able to substitute values into a, uh, an equation or a formula, rearrange a formula and solving quadratics. There are three key topics. So if you're quite weak in any of those three aspects, I do recommend you go back and revise those topics before attempting these. Now, in terms of types of simultaneous equation questions you could get, well, you could either get one where you've got two linear equations, where you've got single x and single y's. You could have a pair of equations where one is linear, so where you've got a single x or a single y, and you've got a quadratic equation. And the third example is when you've got, so when I'm going to go back to the quadratic equation, that's when you've got multiple powers. Uh, and the third option is when you've got two nonlinear equations. Now, that can kind of merge with the second va variation of one linear, one quadratic. But you could get an equation where you've got x, y in there or x, y squared or, or a fraction where you've got x are the numerator and y is the denominator in which therefore it's not quite quadratic so we just generalize it as calling it non-linear equations. Now if you have got one of the Casio FX991EX calculator then it does have a feature where you can solve quadratic equa um, simultaneous equations on there. Now there is a feature now the only flaw in this particular feature is that both equations need to be the same and they also don't can't have any powers so for example if you have got what would what we class as a simple gcse s question of where you've got single x and a single y 
uh, in both equations, then you could type in the following steps and your calculator would, that would give you the answer straight away in a matter of seconds. So it's just like another option for you. I, I'd still recommend you showing your working out, but um, as a way of turning an exam question into a textbook question where you know the answer, then it's certainly a good piece of kit to have when working through these questions. The only thing to be wary of is the format of the question. So when you are typing things and you are using technology to answer these questions for you, please be aware of the format in which how they want the questions answered. So for example, on this particular calculator, they want AX plus BY equals the constant. Um, and in some, when you're moving on to multiple variables, so IE3, um, they're wanting in the equation where you've got the where the equation equals the constant. So again, if you follow those steps that are on the screen there, you will work those out. And again, I'll put a video up, and there are many videos on YouTube where it shows you how to possibly use your calculator. So all you need to do is just type in the make and model of your calculator, and I'm sure something useful will come up. So moving on to the steps. Now, again, I will go through some examples as soon as I've gone through these. So when we've got one linear and one quadratic equation, so a linear equation, a straight line, and a quadratic equation, i.e. a curve or a parabola, can intersect either uh, not at all at one point or at two points. Now, again, this topic is kind of related to discriminants. And again, if that makes absolutely no sense to you at all, then there is a video, I've posted a video on discriminants, which hopefully gives you an idea. So for example, if we're looking for where the curve meets a line at one point, so in other words, the line is a tangent, then we're looking for one coordinate. Uh, if we're looking at the middle example where, it, uh, where the line intercepts a quadratic twice, then we're looking for two coordinates. And if it's not at all, then it's just not gonna be solvable. There'll be no answers for it. So in other words, once you've substituted equation, linear equation into the quadratic, you make the quadratic equal to zero, kind of being a spoiler in terms of steps. And what you'll find there is that that quadratic is unsolvable. So if you use the quadratic formula, it'll come up with no solutions. Or you could use the discriminants. If you have already aware of that, you will find that b squared minus 4ac is less than zero. So moving on from that, let's have a look at the methods to solve a non, uh, two non-linear simultaneous equations. So from this, now, the first step, and again, I'll go through an example of this, but I just thought I'll leave this on the screen and talk you through the steps, and obviously it's a good opportunity for you to copy these steps down. So the first thing you want to do is using the easiest looking equation, commonly the linear equation, make one letter the subject. So with the simple equation, there will be usually one that's simpler than the other. You want to make one letter the subject. Now, don't be a hero and try and make it complicated. Try and keep things positive. So try not to mess around with negatives because the moment you start messing around with negatives, you're opening your chance of making a silly mistake. Then once you've made one letter the subject in your easiest looking equation, substitute this into the other equation so that you only have one variable. And that's the key point is the fact that you want to try and turn an equation with two variables into an equation that's only got one. And that's why you kind of need two, two equations to solve uh, for two variables. Um, once you've done that, that should then look like a quadratic equation. And then you will then go on to make it equal to zero and solve that equation. So once you've, and again, there's several ways in which you can solve that quadratic equation. Don't automatically think that it's always going to factorize. You might have to use a quadratic formula in which, although that'd be pretty evil, it's still definitely possible uh, at this particular level. And so what you'll end up with is you'll either end up with no x solutions, which shows that the line doesn't, or the curve doesn't intersect at all with the other curve or line. You might end up with one answer where it's going to be a tangent, or you could end up with two values. Now, once you've got those values, then what you want to then do is using the easiest looking equation, substitute that value that you know, that of that variable you know, into the simple looking equation to find the respective y ordinates. So for example, if you found the x ordinates, um, substitute those x values into one of the equations to find their respective y ordinates, and then you've got your answer. And again, a key thing to remember here is that not all simultaneous equation questions are going to refer to algebra. Not all of them are going to refer to a graph. So just be a little bit savvy when it comes to that and make sure that if it relates to curves and lines on a graph, then you write your answer as coordinates. 
some of today's equations could be written in the form of a, a, a situation. So it could say like three cups of tea and four biscuits cost £10.60, whereas um, buying at the same shop two cups of tea and seven biscuits costs £16.20. So it might be related to a real life situation in which you'd have to give those values separately. Whereas if it was related to things on a graph, then make sure you give your answers as coordinates. So to start off, what we'll do is we'll take a, just a quick refresh on simple simultaneous equations. In this particular example, we have got two linear equations now. Just to remind ourselves what a linear equation is, that is where you've got a linear, a, a, obviously a linear equation, when you've got a single x and a single y in your equation. So from this, what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to show you a method of what we call the elimination method. Now, in our aim, as you can see, we've got a different quantity of x and we've got different quantities of y in both these equations. And our aim is to try and get the same quantity of each of those two variables so that we can then work out the difference between the two. So what I want to be thinking of is, is there a number that I can multiply 2 to get 3 or 3 to get 4, which there isn't? So what I'm going to have to do in this particular example is multiply both the equations by a number and as long as I'm doing the same two or three things in each equation, I'm going to be doing some fine. It's a bit like equivalent fractions. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick a random letter out of the two. I'm going to go for x. And what I'm going to try and do is multiply this first equation by three. And I'm going to multiply this second equation by two. And what that then does is that it turns the first equation to 6x plus 9y equals minus 12. And multiplying the second equation by 2, I get 6x plus 8y equals minus 20. Now, as you can see, I've now got my x is the same. And what I'm now going to do is because I've got the same quantity of a variable, I'm now going to subtract or what they call eliminate the 6x's from both equations by taking the two things away. So 6x take away 6x is nothing. 9 take away 8 is 1y. And 12 minus minus 20 is positive 8. So what I've done is I found the first value of the 2 that I'm missing. So now using y equals 8, and I'm going to pick one of the two original equations. So let's just go for the top one in which we get that. So 2x plus 3y equals 4. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap the uh, replace the y with its value of 8. So what I've got is I've got 2x plus 24 equals minus 4. I'm then going to take the 24 over to the other side in which I've got 2x equals minus 28, which gives me a value of x equals minus 14. So the answer to this simultaneous equation is that when x equals minus 14, y is going to equal 8. Now, if I was asked if this were relating to lines on a graph, and let's say where find the intersection point of 2x plus 3y equals minus 4 and 3x plus 4y equals minus 10, then how I'd write the answer is I'd write it as a coordinate. So whenever anything relates to a graph, you write it, write the answer as a coordinate. If it relates to anything else, you can just write them neatly as you go from there. Now, again, if you have got a calculator and a I've, for example, like the Casio FX991EX, which is kind of recommended on the A-level syllabus, then there is a feature in which you could enter these equations into your calculator and it comes up with your answer straight away without having to do any form of algebra or any form of working out. It just tells you straight away what the answer is going to be. Be careful when it comes, one thing to note when it comes to these questions before I move on to another example, is if any of your answers are decimals or irrational numbers, or let's say quite nasty answers like uh, recurring decimals, then when you are, once you've found one value, make sure you use the, you use the exact value when you substitute that number into one of the other equations to find the respective other value. It's really important there that you don't use rounded answers when you're trying to find the, other va the second value. Always make sure you use the exact value. So that's one of the reasons why a lot more scientific calculators now are, aren't giving you rounded answers. They give it in its exact form. So whether it be in the form of a third or in the form of a fraction, just be careful. And also 
take extra care when dealing with negatives as well. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk you through the method of solving asymptotes equations when we've got one linear equation and one non-linear equation. So the first thing we want to do is in the linear equation make one letter the subject. Now it doesn't really matter whether you make x a subject or y the subject, but one thing that you should definitely be able to spot is that making one of the letters should be easier than the other. Now, when I talk about making it easier, it's about making it look nicer. So try and avoid using fractions, try and avoid using negatives where possible. But one letter, if it's not already done uh, in terms of if you haven't got, let's say, y equals something in terms of x or x equals something in terms of y, you might have to do a bit of rearranging in this. But make one letter the subject in the linear equation is definitely the first starting point, trying to keep the answer as simple as possible. Now in the second step, what you then need to do is substitute this rearranged formula into your non-linear equation. And then from by doing that, what you've done is rather than having an equation that's got two variables, in other words, two letters, you've now just got one letter. Now that might involve powers, that doesn't make a difference, but as long as you've just got an equation that just involves x's or just involves y's, happy days. The next thing you want to move, once you've got that, is you then want to simplify, so collect all the like terms together and make it equal to zero. Now, if you're on the right track, you, what you should be able to spot is that this now looks like a quadratic equation. And once you've got a quadratic equation, what you then want to do is either solve it by using factorization or by using the quadratic formula to solve that quadratic. Now, you can also use your calculator um, to save a bit of time. Once you've done that, what you then need to do is from your answers of your quadratic equation, you want to substitute that back into your rearranged or non-rearranged linear equation to try and find what the respective values are going to be for the other variable. So in other words, in step four, if you've got two values of x, what you then want to do is substitute each of those x values into the linear equation to find their respective y values. And likewise, if you found the quadratic equation was already in terms of y, you found the y ordinates, you then need to substitute those y uh, values into the linear, linear equation to find the respective x values. So obviously when we talk through an example, this hope these five steps should hopefully make sense. But I certainly would recommend that these are the five steps you follow to solve any simultaneous equations where one is a linear equation and one is non-linear. So in our second example, what we've got is we've got to solve y equals 3x minus 4 and y equals x squared minus 4x plus 6. So the reason here we've got two variables, so we need two equations. Now from this, before we start, the first thing you need to spot is that the first equation is what we call a linear equation. And our second one is our non-linear equation, which we know is a quadratic. Now, the first thing you want to spot is in the linear equation is make one letter the subject. So from this, we've already got y as a subject. So what I'm going to do is wherever I see a y in the quadratic equation, I'm going to replace it with 3x minus 4. So what that then does, it gives me x squared minus 4x plus 6 is equal to 3x minus 4. Because they're both equal y, the two things must be equal. So what this is now slowly starting to look like, it's slowly starting to look like a quadratic equation and one of the most imperative rules of solving a quadratic equation is make it equal to zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of this onto the left hand side. So doing so I get 7x plus 10 equals zero. Now from this you then want to think to yourself, well now I need to solve this, in which there's several ways in which I can solve this. Well actually there's probably two that I'd recommend. One is an attempt at factorising, two if not go for using the, the um, quadratic formula. So from this it does actually factorise, so in which I've got x minus 5, x minus 2 equals 0. So what, if I, what I've got in terms of two values is x equals 2 or x equals 5. Now, the next stage is once I've done that, I now need to find their respective x, y values. So when x equals 2, and from this I'm going to use the linear equation of y equals 3x minus 4. 
y is going to equal 3 lots of 2 minus 4, which equals 2. And when x equals 5, y is going to look, um, equal 3 lots of 5 minus 4, which gives us 11. So how I'd write the answer is, I wouldn't leave it in this way. Actually, the way that I've set it out is actually not too bad because you can see that it's quite obvious that I wrote down when x equals 2, y is going to equal 2. When x equals 5, y, uh, x equals 5, y is going to equal 11. What I've not dot, done is x equals 5x or 2, and then y equals 2 or 11. Now, try not to write your answers like this, simply because we don't know which values refer to uh, are compared with what. So is the 2 matched up with the 2, or is the 2 matched up with the 11? It's you might think, well, that's mentioned first, so that must be there. However, try not to take that for granted. Set your work out like I've done here, or just to be safe, just write down your answer like I'm doing here. And there, so you can see on each line, you can see the respective values. And again, if this was referring to a graph, then I'd write the answers as a coordinate. And there is your final answers. Now, in this particular example of solving simultaneous equations, as you can see, we've got some quite evil looking equations. Now, there's going to be a fair bit of work involved in this particular question, which is one of the reasons why I've chose it to have it as an example. So the first thing we need to identify is which equation is our linear and which is our nonlinear. So here is our linear equation and this here is our nonlinear equation. It's not quite a quadratic so we're just going to call it nonlinear. So the first thing we need to do is using linear equation is make one letter the subject. Now from this it doesn't really matter depending on how good your mathematics skills are but like I said don't be a hero and try and make some make it more complicated than what it actually needs to be. So in the linear equation I've got y plus 2x equals 3 and what I need to do is either make y or x the subject. Now, if I make x a subject, I'm going to end up with a fraction. I'm going to end up with 3 minus y over 2. Whereas if I make y the subject, I'm going to end up with y equals 3 minus 2x. So given the two choices of these two things, I'm going to scrap that and just go for this. So what I'm now going to do is now that I've made y the subject, wherever I see a y, I'm going to substitute it into this nonlinear equation. So substituting y equals 3 minus 2x into, and again, you don't need to write this down when you're working through this, we get something that's going to look quite messy, but we've got 3 minus 2x squared plus um, x, 3 minus 2x equals 13 minus 16x. Now if I just take my time and make sure that I'm multiplying this out correctly, uh, recognising this is not going to be 9 minus uh, 4x squared, it's going to be 9 minus 6x minus 6x plus 4x squared and then multiplying this out we get plus 3x minus 2x squared equals 13 minus 16x. Now again, it's worth just making sure that we've not messed up and not made a silly mistake, in which I'm hoping that I haven't. Um, so now what we need to do is, I've eliminated all my y's, what I now need to do is make this a little bit neater. So not doing too much at the same time, so let's have a look at, we get 9 minus 12x uh, plus 2x squared plus 3x equals 13 minus 16x and again neatening up even a little bit more we've got 2x squared then we're going to end up with minus 9x plus 9 equals 13 minus 16x and then from that we're then going to take all of this over to this side in which we end up with 2x squared uh, plus 7x minus 4 equals 0. And then what I then need to do is have an attempt at solving this particular equation of 
uh, 2x squared plus 7x minus 4. And if I do that, I get the values of x as being x equals a half or minus 4. And again, we could have done that by factorising or by using the quadratic formula in which it simplifies to give me that and when it does factorise. So once I've got my respective x values, I now need to use these to work out what the respective y values are going to be. So if I just scroll down a little bit just to create a little bit of room. So using, so using, and if I go back up to in terms of the original equation, so using y equals three minus two x. So when x equals a half, y is gonna equal three minus two lots of a half, which equals one. And when x equals minus four, y is going to equal three lots, uh, three t minus two lots of minus four, which is going to be three plus eight, which is 11. So that then gives me the solutions of um, x equals a half, y equals one, and x equals minus four, and y equals 11. And again, if it was related to a graph, then I would write those answers as coordinates and again just highlight those answers because there's a lot of numbers and algebra all over that page. So in this next example again I've got one linear equation and I've got one non-linear equation. So in the linear equation what I need to do is make one letter the subject. So using x plus y equals 5. Now I've got really a choice which letter I prefer. It doesn't really make a difference but let's just go for x. So I've got x equals 5 minus y. Now make sure you recognise that that is not y minus 5, it's 5 minus y. So what I'm now going to do is, now that I've made x the subject to know what x is in terms of y, I'm now going to substitute it into that equation. So I've got x equals 5 minus y, I know that xy equals 6. So wherever I see an x, I'm going to swap it with 5 minus y. So what I end up with is that and then expanding the brackets out I get 5y minus y squared equals 6. Now what well, again this is now looking like a quadratic equation in terms of y. Now as I've got a negative y squared what I'm going to do is rather than taking the 6 over to the left hand side I'm actually going to take the 5y minus y squared over to the right hand side so just to keep the y squared positive because it's a lot easier for me to factorise or go on to solve using that. So if I take it onto that side I get 0 equals y squared minus 5y plus 6 which does factorise so and again you could use your calculator to do this so we get y minus 3 y minus 2 in which I get y equals 3 or 2. So now using those two values, so again, just having a bit of space. So I've got x plus y equals 5. So when y equals 2, x is going to equal 3. And when y equals 3, x is going to equal 2. Now, that in itself might be fine to give your answer like this, but as you can see, Typically, you usually have x's and then y's. So if this question was relating to a uh, to a graph and I have to write the answers in the coordinate, I would go on to say that the answer to this particular question is going to be when x equals 3, y equals 2, and when x equals 2, y equals 3. And if it was related to a graph, I would write the answers as coordinates. So, like I said, I hope this makes a, few, uh, a bit of sense to you when dealing with simultaneous equations at this particular level. I've gone through a range of different types of questions you might get asked, but the general method is exactly the same. If you like a copy of a worksheet or a copy of the notes, please drop me an email at 162 maths at gmail.com and see you again soon.